Always a good day to have you on the show. Always a, a good day when we can look at a leaderboard and see Canadian flag, Canadian flag, Canadian flag. <laughs> like it's, I know it's only Friday, um, but this is another tournament where Canadians have, have been doing well. A lot of the usual suspects, but did you did you see this coming in terms of the Canadian contingent being successful in in what is this you know 2020 2.0? Uh, I think to a certain extent. I don't think I, I expected it to be this kind of consistent all the time. It's, you know, the first two tournaments, uh, Corey Connors is in the hunt, then we had Mackenzie Hughes finishing third, and then last week you had Adam Hadwin uh, tied for fourth, and then yesterday and for most of the day you had Canadians one and two, and uh, Roger Sloan came in at seventh. So um, it's it's uh, it's a really – it's probably in, in the 30-plus years that I've been covering golf, it's probably the deepest – talent pool that I've ever seen from the Canadians and I can give you uh, I can make a case for every one of those guys being able to win next week or the week after or the week after that and and you know I had a, I had a conversation last night with Roger Sloan who was tied for seventh after the round and I said why do you think Canadians are playing so well right now and he says because we're good says, that's <laughs> all it is he says we're good and you better get used to it because it's going to stay that way I like that answer yeah you yeah. know Bob when you say that at some point we stop saying well they're really good Canadians. They're really <laughs> right. good, period. Yeah, good and that's golfers. what he's saying, you know. And But it's just so evident when you look up and you see a half a dozen Canadian flags. And the way they do it in the golf scoring, and they put the home country flag up beside it. So it just blares out at you that there's six Canadian flags under par yesterday. And, and each week, you're getting a top five, a top ten finish, at least from one of the guys. And the consistency of, of an Adam Hadwin is just showing through now i mean maybe he's at a little bit different level just on a week-to-week basis yeah and you know i did i i actually had a conversation with with adam earlier this week and i asked him the same question about it and he he gave a you know he said it's a combination of things but he did give credit to the fact that uh, for mike weir's masters win he says because of all these guys out here basically were sort of teenagers when when mike won and that really opened the door for us gave us kind of the incentive uh, gave us the confidence that somebody can do it. Um, he, he gave a lot of credit to that. Also a little bit to the Team Canada program, the national team program, which has sort of been evolving over the last 15 years. Not all the guys on, on the PGA Tour right now spent uh, time on that, or if they did, they spent a little bit of time. But there's kind of a combination of factors. But he also said that they all push each other. You know, they all want to be the top Canadian. Everyone wants to be that guy, let alone there's also a race for the Olympic teams. The top two players will uh, will represent Canada at Tokyo if the Olympics go next year in golf. So right now it's Nick Taylor at minus eight. He is uh, five shots off the lead, tied for second. And Adam Hadwin is in the top ten at minus five. And right now you're looking at... I want to say six Canadians who could make the cut this weekend at uh, Muirfield Village. And I, I bring that up because don't go anywhere. Stay there for, for the entire next week as well because the memorial, of course, will be played. And uh, some guy named Tiger apparently is going to be in Ohio next weekend to play. Uh, Tiger Woods announcing earlier this week that he will make his return at the memorial. This is the, um, you know, the obvious question, Bob. I'm, I'm not trying to be creative. <laughs> what are your expectations for Tiger Woods next weekend? Uh, mine are pretty high, to be honest with you. You know, we saw him at that match at, uh, with, with Peyton Manning and, and Brady and, uh, and, and Phil, and he looked really good. He, there was no restriction in his swing, no wincing of pain. Uh, you know, he was full out, and he was the best of the four players but easily. Uh, there's also been a few videos leaked on social media of him practicing, and he looks good. He does have a little history of coming back after a long break and playing well. Last year, he took uh, three months off after having knee surgery at the end of the year, at the end of the PGA Tour year, and played the Zozo Championship in Japan and won that. So he's done it before, but but I, I don't know if he'll win next next week, but I, I suspect that he'll be in the, in the hunt, also considering the fact that this is a golf course where he has won five times before, and in the Memorial Tournament, he's a combined 117 under par on this golf course, so not like he doesn't know the course. Weeksy, we've all been watching golf with interest to see how it's going to impact the other sports. And sometimes it's hard to compare an individual sport with a team sport and say how it's going to impact. But of real interest to me yesterday was to see three guys tee it up, Nick Watney, Dylan Fratelli, and Denny McCarthy, who had all tested positive. And I thought the, the way they brought them back, they brought them back together in the same group, but they really went right to the CDC and said, this is the return to work policy, in which I really hadn't 
focused on following those rules, but it was 10 days mm -hmm. since the symptoms first appeared and then no fever for three days, which allowed them to come back and play. And that's of real interest, I think, to all the leagues because guys are going to test positive. How do you get them back on the ice? How do you get them back on the field? How do you get them back on the course? Yeah, exactly. And and the, the tour, you know, this is one of those things that the tour – thought about early on and and tried to uh tried to kind of figure out okay how are we going to bring these guys back um you know they have to have a number of uh of negative tests over a, a course of 48 hours there's um there's been some situations where they believe that there's been false positives so for instance cameron champ tested tested po sort of tested positive and then two days later tested negative for three consecutive tests so he was allowed to come back so there's all sorts of fluidity to to the rules and how they're how they're interpreting it, and I think in some cases I know the leagues have all been discussing amongst each other how they're going to handle this, whether it be the PGA Tour and the NHL or Major League Baseball. And as you said, they're not they're not all similar in how they play and how close the athletes get, but but there are some similarities in how you can handle return to works and and different testing procedures and things like that. So. Uh, good for them for kind of sharing their uh, their best practices. He is TSN's golf insider, Bob Weeks. And, and Bob, a lot of people want to get inside the game or Bryson DeChambeau. It's it's not often that a guy puts on 25 pounds of muscle. And, and I would put Brooks Kepka maybe in that category because Brooks this week tweeted out um, – a not so cryptic cryptic message about Kenny Powers for the the show on HBO and and steroid allegations of that character. Did you read into that as just another tour player having fun with the idea of someone bulking up, or does you know does a golfer adding twenty five pounds immediately bring up the performance enhancing drug topic? Yeah, I think there's a few whispers out there about what <laughs> what happened with Bryson. Uh, I will say that he is, you know, very scientific. So I'm sure he dove into all the chemicals that were working and weren't working in terms of legality. The players on the PGA Tour get drug tested just like they do for any other Olympic sport. So I, I don't think someone like Bryson would risk that. But I'm, I'm thinking it might be a little bit more of a fun thing. But I don't know what where mm -hmm. Brooks's sentiment lies. But uh, but I, I would have a hard time thinking that DeChambeau would would risk something like that um, with some kind of legal substance. But listen, he's a, he's a smart guy and, and Brooks is a, Brooks is kind of a strong personality. So uh, those two might rub each other the wrong way, even though they're both big boys and they hit it the long way. How do you think things are going to work out staying at the same golf course for two tournaments in a row? Now it's been done. I believe at Pinehurst too, they played a U.S. open and a women's U S open, but for the big guys to, to hammer a course two weeks in a row, how do you think that's going to work out from a physical standpoint? It's uh, it's going to be interesting. I mean, the guys love it because they're all staying in the same places all the time. But they, um, you know, the the setup is a little bit different. So the greens, the first week, they've kept them a little bit slower. So they're at about eleven and a half on the stint meter, and that gives them a few more pin placements. So they've got some some areas where they can put pins when it's not too fast. Next week, they'll probably go up to about thirteen to thirteen and a half, which is what they would normally be for the uh it'll be much faster would normally be for the memorial the big difference too is they vary some some team locations so the course is playing a little bit shorter and a little bit different using some different team grounds the big worry that the guys have though is that you know there's a lot of landing areas that are the same for all the players regardless of where you're putting things and you end up with like a divot farm out there so if you're playing two weeks in a row there's there is really the, the very good possibility as you get later into the tournament next week that guys are going to start landing in divots if they aren't filled in or if they aren't filled in properly, let's say, or even a, even a kind of a sandy divot. So that's the biggest concern they've had. Other than that, they, they believe that the course can handle two weeks in a row, a lot of traffic. Uh, the practice range apparently is getting beat up already. Uh, they've got some pretty hot weather as well down there, the same kind of weather that we're getting here. So there's a lot of stress on the greens if they do keep them fast. So it'll be interesting to see what they do. But uh, the courses will look a little bit different, but not significantly different enough to, to really make it uh, make the guys think twice too much. Now, Bob, the, there will be less traffic next weekend than originally planned, and that's because they won't have spectators. The Memorial was supposed to be the first tournament to allow spectators into the gallery. Um, when you look down you know, in, into this 2020 season and you think of a, a, a tournament that – that maybe can can hold fans. Do, do you see one obvious choice as being 
the first tournament that, that dips their toe into bringing spectators back first? I will say that the first tournament that will bring them back to, but still probably shouldn't will be the U.S. Open. I just think that these guys are hell-bent to have some kind of fans there, and I'm not sure how they're going to do it. There's talk about having sort of uh, stationary platforms where fans could go and not move around the golf course. So you could go into this platform, and they would limit the number of people who would go in and where they could stand. But if I was to, to say what tournament is going to look like a normal tournament, uh, I would say the Masters, and and we may not have uh, uh, changes in the in the protocols for for the COVID right by then. But I think the Augusta National mm-hmm. has some kind of way that they'll be able to test every person who comes onto that golf course or do something along those lines to make it happen. I don't think you'll see the kind of numbers at any tournament that we normally would expect, but I expect you'll see something at Augusta National that will will resemble fans in the gallery. Well, Bob, uh, I'll, I'll leave you with this. Considering that you're not traveling as much, maybe you've played more golf. Have you suddenly become the best TSN personality at Weston? <laughs> That's a deep pool. You know, we've got uh, we've got a we got a big uh, a big talent uh, pool from from TSN there. That's right. I can't be I can't be Pooley and I can't beat uh, O Dog. So I guess that leaves me out, right? I, I guess I'm the third wheel. Well, hey. hey. <laughs> I don't know. Pooley's, uh, he was criticizing his own game the other day. I don't know if he's just playing possum oh, yeah. or not. He Maybe he wants he's a couple more strokes. He's all over the place right now. He's all over the place right now. O's got that honor. We know that, Weeksy. Yeah. yeah we, we do. We have lots of good fun. We have lots of good fun up there. At, uh, there's a good crew at, uh, at Weston, and it's always good to play with Dave and with Jeff.